Hello once again everyone, Vanguard of Valor here, and welcome back to another episode of FTL. Now for this episode, we're adding a new mod to our list. We now have the High-Res Backgrounds mod and Diversity mod. Now, Diversity mod, what it does is it adds a bunch of... a bunch? A bunch of alternate skins for some of our weapons. So things are a little bit more distinct, and I think they look quite good for the most part. The one we're using is slightly modified. I changed it a little bit to someone, something someone else had changed a little bit, so now it only has cosmetic changes in it. I'm going to link you to the thread, excuse me, link you in the thread down below so you'll be able to get it for yourself if you're interested. And I think it should be pretty neat. Now, we're going to jump straight into the game here. If you're not interested in listening to the ship talk, you can click right about here, right about now to do so. But we're going to go in and talk to it anyway. So here we go. We're going to be using something I've been looking forward to for a while. Crystal Cruiser. Oh yeah. Finally unlocked this thing. And it took me a lot of tries. Now, honestly, if you're trying to unlock it for yourself and you're having a hard time, one tip I can tell you, try and use the Rock Cruiser Type B. I got it with the Type B Rock Cruiser myself, got the Ancestry Achievement for it as well, and the reason I suggest it is very simple. The first event that starts out the entire chain is finding the Stasis Pod. Now, the event that has the Stasis Pod, if you are any ship other than the Rock Cruiser, because you won't have the Rock Plating Augmentation, you only have a 33% chance of actually finding the, the Stasis Pod. If you have the Rock Plating, you have a 100% chance of finding it if you manage to find the event. After that, you'll need to find the event in either NG or Zoltan space to thaw it out. You'll have to find the Rock Homeworlds to actually get to the next step, and then you'll actually have to find the area in the Rock Homeworlds, which is unmarked, so that can be painful. But it can be done if you put your mind to it. It took me a whole pile of tries, but you can do it. <laughs> anyway, back to our Crystal Cruiser. We are going to rename this thing, and then we're going to get going. So this is going to be the VSS Chivalry, I think. Yes, Chivalry. Now we're going to start out with a male as our captain, who's going to be King Arthur himself. Very nice. Our second crew member here, also human, is going to be Sir Galahad. It was very important in the Arthurian legends. We're also going to make our first crystal crew, Sir Lancelot, I think. Who can have a thing of knights and not have Lancelot? And we're also going to include Gawain. There we go. All important knights, and King Arthur himself. Now to talk about this ship in particular, there are a couple important things to mention. First of all, it's a giant crystal. That's pretty cool. The layout inside this giant crystal is a bit strange, though. You've got a bunch of rooms that are sticking off on their own. This one, I think, might have a teleporter in it or something later on. I don't know. It looks like it should have something. Everything is quite far apart. If you're in the engine's room, you have a bit of a trek to get to if you want to get to the med bay. But it has all the standard systems. It's got a layer of shields, two of the engines, got some oxygen, got some helm, got some med bay, got your sensors, got your doors, and three levels of weapons. And that's where things get a little bit different. We have a Crystal Burst Mark I, which is basically a normal burst laser Mark I, except it fires crystals. They're penetrating a one level layer. Blah, blah, blah. They penetrate one layer of shields, and it's also worth noting that they are counted as missiles by defense drones, so even defense drone Mark I's can shoot them down. A little bit dangerous in the early game. We also have Heavy Crystal Mark I, which is basically a heavy laser, does the same thing. Also pierces a single shield, also can be shot down like a rocket. We also need to talk about the special augmentation the ship has, because it's pretty cool. The Crystal Vengeance. Every time our ship takes damage, a 10% chance of a shard breaking off and flying at our enemy. Now, the shard will actually shatter out of the room and launch towards it, as far as I can tell. And it seemed to be somewhat shield-piercing. Um, it may only pierce one shield, like these crystals, but I don't think so. I believe I saw it pierce at least two shields. So it may pierce all shields and hit, which would be pretty cool. I have to do more experimentation with it to figure that out, but I'd have to wait and see. There are three achievements to unlock to get the next layout, and they are a little bit buggy at the moment. This one... Sweet Revenge for destroying an enemy ship with a shard from the Crystal Vengeance Augment happened when I, the first time a crystal uh, shard actually hit the enemy ship. So you don't need to destroy them with it, you just need to hit them, as far as I can tell. I hit a drone in the, in the helm with a random crystal and it got me the achievement. There's also no escape for using the Crystal Cruiser to trap four enemy crew in a room using the Crystal Being Power, which is the lockdown power or using a lockdown bomb, which is only accessible in the secret sector. Uh, is that. <laughs> you can use it, but you're going to have a hard time getting one. Now, Clash of the Titans for destroying 15 rock ships, including rock pirate ships, is should be fairly easy to get as long as you get a bunch of rock sectors to go to. 
but we'll have to wait and see if we find that in this run-through. But that is all we have to talk about for now, so let us jump forwards and see what we can see. Alright, here we go. The aid we carry is vital to the remaining Federation as always, so we'll need to get supplies and power ourselves up on the way. Well, let's see what we're going to do here. We're going to set Galahad over in the engine. Since he has the longest run to the medbay, we want him to be able to move the fastest. Lancelot's going to be in weapons, and Gawain is going to be in the shields, because I think that's appropriate. And, uh, power up our weapons, power down our medbay, put the power in the engines, and that's our standard stuff done. Alright. Now, hopefully we get good luck out here. Let's jump. Got a distress beacon right ahead, that's always good. No need to go to the store, because we have nothing to sell. What's here? Ah! I knew someone would fall into our dastardly trap, they say. It appears this distress beacon was nothing but a decoy for pirates. But it is a rock cruiser, so that's good for us. Now, that is one of our new textures right there. It is our Heavy Laser Mark 1. The Heavy Laser Mark 2 has the old look. Which is funny, because now the Heavy Laser Mark 1 looks cooler. But, bam, there we go. Awesome. Weapons are offline, we can fight at our leisure. Anyway, yeah, that's one of the new textures. It's pretty cool looking, I think. It's funny, it can actually be better for you to not completely destroy weapons early in the game, because that way they're shooting at your shields, and if your shields are taking damage, you level them up. So you can actually get those higher level shields quite fast if you do actually let them shoot the shields when they can't get through them. Of course, I'm not going to do that, because I don't like letting them have a free run, but it's, it's interesting. Interesting thought of how to play the game. Ship explodes, leaving behind two fuel, missile, and 17 scrap. None too shabby. Let's keep moving. I guess we'll head over this way and work our way around. Something like that. <laughs> I wobble, wobble, wobble. Anyway, hopefully we have better luck here. Ooh, we arrive to find the number of ships convening around a station. We turn into their unencrypted communications and discover that they want to take possession of an enemy ship intact. We can offer our services, but they're not going to accept. They briefly scan our ship and inform us that we are not properly equipped for this type of mission. Well, same to you guys. Out of here. That's unfortunate, we can't get anything out of that that way, and we jump to a sun, which could be an early end to us if we can't kill them quickly. The beacon has been placed too close to a super giant class M star, and we will start overheating if we are not careful. So we're going, and they also have a dual laser, one of the other new skins. I quite like that one too, because it lets you easily tell if that's a dual laser, it's got two lasers on it. <laughs> There's an, a missile coming our way, which is also reskinned. The rocket itself is even reskinned, which looks pretty cool. And we'll punch them, put a hole in their weapons, which is great. Now we should be able to blast them in some other systems and make them regret fighting us. Here comes our first solar flare. Thankfully our shields are online. You do take less fires. Oh wow, that's a weird time to pause. They offer to surrender, giving us 4 fuel, drone part, and 10 scrap. That's a pretty decent offer, honestly. The fuel is the big thing. 10 scraps, yeah. Not bad. That's what you often get for fights in the early sectors. You know what? We're going to accept. Sure. You can live. Surprising though that may be. That's convenient too. Both of the fires started in the airlocks. So we can suffocate them out pretty quick. Yeah, Alright, for the best, actually. We have a lot of fuel. Running out of fuel always sucks. And we can jump out here before they let us on fire again. So let's do just that. What do we have here? We find an automated rebel scout attacking a refueling outpost. Let's intervene to defend those suckers. The automated ship moves in to engage. It also has dual lasers and a uh, beam weapon. It has no shields, though, so our crystal weapons don't give us much of an advantage. I believe they do actually take a little bit longer than their counterparts. Oh, there's a crystal shard, I think. No, that was a normal crystal weapon. That was a normal crystal shot. Oh, they are now defenseless, so there's no problems here. We can kill them at our leisure, like I was saying. And down they go. Fancy that. Down goes the robots. He gives us two fuel, a drone part, and ten scrap, and uh, the outpost hails us, giving us a fuel, a missile, and thirteen scrap. None too shabby. We can afford our level two shields now, but we're going to wait a little bit longer until we can actually afford to power them, and then we're going to keep going. We're up to twenty fuel now, which is quite nice. There's a beacon here by a nearby civilian space station, and no one hails us, which means we apparently can't hail them. Oh well. Communications are silent. Either way. What do we find here? An unidentified ship is badly damaged and still being assaulted by a space pirate. The victim begins a distress message a distress message until a pirate cuts in and offers to split the bounty. Well, we're not interested in doing that. We're going to be heroes and attack those pirates. The pirate ship stops his pursuit and locks weapons. Now, one thing about this ship is that while these weapons are amazing, absolutely amazing, in the first two sectors, they rapidly become outdated in uh, Sector 3 and onwards, where people start to have two layers of shields. Once that happens, another hit to the engines. Once that happens, we start getting a lot of trouble. Ooh, we're in a lot of pain right now. 
They have offered us a generous bribe, including 5 fuel, 2 drum parts, and 9 scrap. We have plenty of fuel now, so we're going to reject the offer and continue the assault. Also, Galahad's on fire. <laughs> That's probably not so good. Their weapons are offline, though, so if we need to run and get health, he can. Yeah, he's going to do just that. Now we're actually going to send our captain over, because he doesn't need to be in the helm right now, since their weapons are all broken. We want that fire out as quickly as possible. Now... He may burn up in there, because it is quite a large area, so we're also going to send Gawain in, because we don't need to worry about blocking attacks. We might as well hurry up and kill them while we have the chance. And we missed a shot. Hit them in the shields just for fun. There is literally no reason to target the shields like that. We just need to turn on the medbay. Oops. There's no reason to target the shields since we have crystal weapons, because they dodge them anyway, but we're going to do it just for kicks. Now we'll hit them in the helm for the kill. There we go. And down they go. Pirate explodes, even behind 22 scrap. It's more useful to me than the nice combination of other things. And, uh, they thank us, and they repair some of our damage. Not great, but definitely not bad. Get back to your station there, friend. They fixed it for you. They're gonna go heal up, and then we can go. It is always nice getting free repairs, though, because as money, you don't have to waste on something else. Or rather, money that would be wasted that you can now spend on something else. Gawain is almost healed up. There we go. He can get back to his station, and Arthur is healed up, and he can get back to his can't quite afford the other two layers of shields, but if we take one out of the engines, we can afford it, no problem. And level two shields are fantastic in the early sectors, because a lot of enemies just can't do anything about it. Let's keep on moving. What do we have here? A small rebel ship nearby. We're fitted for transport rather than combat. Well, let's take those goods from them. We may be the chivalry, but that doesn't mean we're always chivalrous. <laughs> uh, something like that. Anyway, Arthur, Galahad, Lancelot, Gawain, ready for battle. They do have... they won't be able to hurt us here. They have a Heavy Laser Mark 1, so they can't get through our defenses. And, you know what? Let's just let them shoot it. Doesn't even matter. Let's hit them in the oxygen. And, um... When someone runs in there to fix it, let's shoot them again. Bam, bam! There's now a hole in the oxygen room, which is always fun. And we can shoot them again. One more shot in there. Ah, he ran away at just the right time. Also, their med bay is still online. We'll have to put a hole in there, too, if we can. They're fixing the oxygen. Unfortunately, that means you guys have to die. I was willing to let you guys suffocate to death, but apparently, unfortunately, I messed it up, and you have to die instead. The ship was apparently transporting weaponry, but nothing seems to have survived. We only at 17 scrap. That's unfortunate. Like I was saying, we really do need weapons. Otherwise, our weapons get completely outclassed by people with higher level shields, and we get beaten down quite quickly. Quite quickly indeed. I'm not actually sure if we can make that jump, so I'm gonna jump over here now so that if we need to, we can come back this way and make our way across. Actually, we have one, two, three jumps anyway, so let's go over here. Might as well make use of as many jumps as we can. Here we find a well known slave trader hailing us and offering us laborers for cheap. Well, they are Zoltan, so our weapons are gonna have a hard time getting through. They look like they have ion weapon, ion weapon, rockets. So the ion weapons were gonna mess with our shields and the rockets don't care about shields, so let's just attack them anyway. Yep, two ion weapons and a rocket. All of the rocket systems, I believe, have been re, uh, redesigned, and almost all of the rockets have been reskinned too, which is kind of interesting. Miss, 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 miss. Oh, hang on a second. Oh, that was lucky. And uh, put some holes in that armor. And we missed. And there's two hits at least, that's pretty good. Come on, guys, come on. Miss, and right hit in the medbay. Okay, that's unfortunate. But at least it's not an important room. Could have been worse. Could have easily been worse. And they hit us in the engines! That is unfortunate. We need those to be working, thanks. Punch a hole in them, and we miss the weapons. Really? Come on. Here's another rocket coming to hit us in the face. Miss, 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 miss. Hits us in the oxygen. Hit their... I think our crystal just hit one of their ions off screen. You see, you did. You serious? Come on, guys. I don't have a billion... There we go. And the rocket stayed online. <laughs> I don't have as million shots to waste here. I've already taken a lot of hits. There we go. Now they're offline. All right, now you can go fix this, and you can go fix this, and we're gonna leave Lancelot in the weapons so that we get that faster refire rate. They're probably gonna be repairing their weapons right now, so we're gonna punch them with a burst laser. There we go. They surrender, offering us a slave as tribute. We're gonna accept their offer and hope for a mantis or an ng. We got a rock crew, really. <sighs> The least interesting, the, the one I wanted the least. Even a human or a slug would be okay, but uh, I don't like rocks. <laughs> I don't like them. 
Like, they're not good as a mobile repair crew. They're not good as a mobile, you know, anti-border crew. They're, they're literally just not good. I know I'm biased against them, but... Ugh. By the power to fix up our systems, all running at maximum power. Send him back in the medbay. Power the medbay temporarily to heal them other suffocation damage. Yeah, it's just disappointing. Jack, you're, you're not bad. You don't fit with our theme at all, either. But you really just don't fit with anything I need done. Maybe if we get a boarding device, I can send them in. They'll be decent, but until then, he's not going to be the most useful. Ah, well. C'est la vie, as they say. We found an asteroid field. That might be good for us. Pirate ship was lying in wait inside the asteroid field and moves into attack. And they teleported on board. I guess that's a convenient timing. Get in there and help your crystal crew buddy out. Okay, now we're going to be punching these guys with things in the shields, actually, because we want those shields offline. Wow, that's that's actually doing a lot of work for us. Because if we can get those shields down, those asteroids are going to hurt them. Where's that bomb going? It missed. Good. All right, we have taken some damage. There we go. Their weapons are offline. They're suffocating. They're going to get killed by asteroids any second now. We're actually going to send that Gawain over to heal up early, since we may as well. Oh, I forgot to put the power back into the engines. That might explain why we got hit by those early rocks. The ship explodes, even behind a fuel, two missiles, and 15 scrap. Alright. Well, Gawain should be healed up, and then we can send him back to his station. He can take over the shields. Lovely. I'm not sure to give Jack a little bit of shield experience there. I'm not sure if that does. Nah, it doesn't look like it is. That's okay, though. Back on your station there, Jack. Gawain, rather. And we're going to jump on, I think. Actually, we're going to put power back in the engines first, and then we're going to jump on. Oh, I can't actually make that jump. Good thing I checked that I had enough time to get around the other way. We jump into the nebula, and we find a pirate ship. Judging from the fact that they're trying to avoid us, we assume they're smugglers. Trying to wait, stay away from the beacons. Let's attack them anyway. Power up our weapons and move in to engage. They are Zoltan. They are fairly well equipped with dual lasers to knock our shields out, and then a, a beam weapon to hurt us. And rockets. We're getting unlucky here. Everything we find is well equipped to beat us up. Well, hopefully we do a better job of dodging their attacks this time. Where's this gonna go? Nope, that put a hole in the hull too. Fantastic, that was not what I wanted. Well, if this blast can do damage, we can take out their weapons with our crystal burst. And they knocked out our helm, that's really bad. Come on, okay, take out their weapons right now before they fire another rocket. No, they fired another rocket. Well, rocket is, off is offline, so they can't hit us again. Except for the fact that our helm is still broken, so every shot they hit actually damages us. Okay, helm's fixed. Helm's fixed. You're gonna go and heal, honestly, because you're taking a lot of damage just now. King Arthur took a bunch of hits there, too. They can't hurt us now because of the weapons damage they have. They're not trying to escape, though, so we're gonna need to hit them and slow them down. Hit them in the helm. We need to power up our medbay to heal Jack over here. Lancelot's doing okay. Took some damage, though, too. And let's just make sure they go down. Come on, there we go. They offer us four fuel, drone part, and nine scrap if we decide to let them go. We're going to ignore their pleas and attack them anyway, and that is that. The Lancelot. We search the remains of the ship, but come across and but only come across blueprints and debris from broken machinery. A shame, but we take what scrap we can salvage, which includes two missiles, a drone part, and eight scrap. That's actually pretty terrible. Probably would have been better off to take their offer, but I guess sometimes you gotta do what you gotta see. You can only do what you see, I mean. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm trying to say. <sighs> anyway, King Arthur, back to your station. Lancelot, back to your station. Power back into the engines, uh, and let's get out of this place. We do have enough time to jump there and back, too, so we will get another jump out of this. We won't be stuck wasting as much time as we would otherwise. At the Long Range Beacon, what do we find? We find a Rebel Automated Scout floating nearby. We're going to attempt to download the ship's data stores, and hopefully it won't get reactivated. But if it does, that's okay, we'll kill it anyway. Alright, we pull a missile, a drone part, and nine scrap out of its data stores. I don't know quite how that works, as always, but, you know, whatever, we'll take it. And we have... do we have enough time? we got one, two... We should have just about enough time to make another beacon. This is a fight, this is maybe nothing. So we're going to jump to the fight, because, hey, more money is more money. Hard to say no to that. We stumble across a forward scout of the Rebel fleet. Alright guys, they're powering up their FTL, and if they get away, they'll know that warn the fleet of our position. That would be unfortunate, because that would mean we'd get overrun. They can't damage us, though, so we can focus on knocking out their escape mechanisms. Since they only have a dual laser and no offensive drones, they can't actually hurt us. 
That's the glory of level 2 shields in early sectors. This happens fairly regularly. There goes their helm. We're also going to knock out their drone base. They don't have repair drones. And uh, we're going to knock out their engines after this to make sure they don't get back up. Because even if they manage to repair their helm, they're going to have to repair both systems. And that's going to slow them down quite a bit. Yeah, see, there they go. They the helm back up, because it only has one point of damage. And that heals pretty fast. But, now they're done. Here we go. Crystal Heavy Laser. Bam. And it's not even a heavy laser. It is just a crystal heavy and a crystal burst. That's true, because they're not lasers at all. Their ship breaks apart and we're relieved to know that we're still one step ahead of the fleet, gaining two fuel, a missile, and 13 scrap. Not the biggest reward, but it's much better than no reward. We're going to head back over to the exit, and we're actually going to spend our money, buy ourselves an upgrade to our engines, because more dodge is always better, especially when you have a gunner on that system. We have a choice of a mantis controlled sector or a rock controlled sector, and I think we're going to go rock, because that way we have a chance of working on that achievement. The more rocks we kill, the better. Now, the rock people have a particularly aggressive stance towards alien races, so we need to tread carefully. Of course, we are their ancestors, and we do have one of them on board, so they should be a little bit more generous, honestly, but you know what? That's okay. We'll deal with what comes. Now, this is an okay sector for us still, because the enemies shouldn't be quite so powerful yet as to have level 2 shields, but we may have to wait and see. We find a disabled rock transport floating near the beacon. We decide to strip it for useful parts, despite our uncertainty of why it's there. We gain a missile and drone part and 17 scrap from it. Honestly, there's no reason to not do that, because you get a reward even if you have to fight the people. And if you have to fight the people, then you get a chance of getting more stuff anyway? <laughs> Unless you don't want to fight, I guess. But here we go. A rock patrol ship jumps in while we're salvaging the ship and messages us, saying, Filthy pirates! Prepare to die! Without explaining our mission, we'll convince them of anything, so we decide to just kill them. Because, hey, that's great for diplomacy, right? Oh yeah, Federation guys, you came in and just killed some of our people for no reason. Why should we ally with you again? <laughs> but hey, this game doesn't appear to work quite like that, so it's okay. And they missed us with a bunch of those shots, so that works out for the best for us too. Knock out their rocket, our bomb launcher as well, because that thing do quite a bit of damage. We're going to hit them in the helm with our next crystal heavy so they can't dodge or run. Awesome. So these, their system's suffering. The rock ship attempts to make contact. Alien vessel, cease your attack. We will pay. They offer two fuel, a missile, and ten scrap, but we're not accepting that surrender, guys. Just because we're called the BSS Chivalry doesn't mean we act in a chivalrous manner, like I said. We like to kill you. And we're going to do just that. Blast a couple shots in there. Crystal Heavy hit them in the medbay for the kill. And down they go. We need to kill you. We can't have 15 rock ships surrender to us. The ship explodes, leaving behind a missile, a drone part, and 16 scrap. Alright. That's not bad. And we can jump on a little bit forwards. A little bit more money, and we'll be able to buy another level of engines, which is always good. We encounter a rock vessel and attempt to open trading frequencies, but they take it as an act of cultural transgression and open fire. You'd think Jack, our rock, would know. Or maybe Gawain and Lancelot, but nope, apparently they don't know about that kind of stuff. These guys have simple missiles and a little laser. <sighs> so it looks like we can just blast them in the weapons and all our problems will be over, as long as they don't hit us with this rocket, which they did not. That's always good. Now one of the people will go in there to start fixing it, which means we can shoot them with the crystal burst. Bam bam! Thank you kindly. Crystal heavy. The nice thing about them getting damage resistance is that it means we can do damage to the crew without actually damaging the ship. Gives us a little bit of a higher chance of clearing the crew out without having to have those kind of weapons specifically. Again, they say that they will cease if it, blah, 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 they will pay us to cease our attack. They offer two fuel, two missiles, and eleven scrap, but we again are not accepting any surrender. We're probably not gonna get as good as that again, but you know what? I don't care. We need to destroy them as far as I can tell. I don't know if surrender counts. Where's he running to? I think that one might have been dead. Which is why we have another crew member going up there now. There's also no oxygen in the room, which probably doesn't help. But down they go nonetheless. This is better than 2-2 two, two, and 10? It is much better. The ship explodes, leaving behind a substantial collection of useful scrap, including 3 fuel, 1 drone part, and 21 scrap. Fantastic. Now we're going to keep going, but before we do that... Boop, boop, upgrade those puppies. Now, next I'm probably going to hold off on the fifth layer of engines until I level up my doors my sensors, and maybe my medbay. Since we have a crew that all have more than 100 health, this is a situation where I think having an upgraded medbay would be useful, because having that faster heal speed actually makes a big difference. Now, so we're probably going to do those upgrades next, because we don't want to get stuck. What have we here? We're intercepted by a rock salvage operation. They don't seem to mind that we're on board while they start to junk our ship. Thankfully, they can't actually get through our shield unless this is a two-shot laser, but I don't think it is. 
I guess we'll find out in a second. Here comes the first heavy laser shot. And, no, oh, it is a two-shot laser, but that's okay, because our shield's recharged anyway, and they missed the second shot regardless. Knock them in the weapons. We're going to leave one of their guns online, just for fun. Hit them in the helm. There we go. Put a hole in the helm. That's always good. Level up our shields a little bit. He's doing okay. We're going to crystal heavy them in the oxygen. There we go. They resisted that. That's okay. Let's hit them in the helm again. Awesome. They can't hurt us as long as that system isn't full. So we'll wait until they take a double shot with that to maybe level up our shields a little bit more, and then we're going to hit them again with another Crystal Heavy. We've gotten lucky so far, though. Since we're not fighting too many NG, we're not seeing too many people with the defense drones, because if they have a defense drone, they get a lot harder to kill really fast. And down they go. When we destroy the rocks, their ship explodes, even behind two fuel, a drone part, and 26 scrap. Alright, so do we want our doors, our sensors, or our med bay first? Let's get the med bay first, and we'll get the doors and the sensors after that. Okay, then we can keep moving. Anything over here? We found some asteroids. That's unfortunate. Inside, we find a rock mineral, mineral blah, 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 rock mining vessel harvesting the mineral-rich asteroids in this locality. In this locality, in this place, what? That's a weird, it's a weird noun to use. And their scouts take your presence to be a transgression. Battle stations. All right then, battle stations it is. Now, if we get lucky, those asteroids will do more damage to them than they do to us. This is a single burst raw shot, which means that if it happens at bad timing, or doesn't miss like that one did, or if that hits us in the shields, which it did not either, it could have been bad for us. We're actually going to knock out their shields, though, with our second salvo, which also missed, because if we can get their shields down, the asteroids do a lot of the work for us. I just wanted to turn that rocket off as quickly as possible. So our next heavy shot should knock their shields out, which means uh, the asteroids should do... Oh, come on! Asteroids should do a lot of the work for us. There we go, that's what I like to see. Come on now. Play fair, guys. There we go. Asteroids start doing their jobs, blasting them all up and down. We can basically just watch now. <laughs> Although they have resisted every asteroid hit except for that one. Alright, there's another miss. Yeah, having high level engines means your people level up really fast. Especially when you have two of them. Blam. Because that additional bonus from having a crew on the engines. What am I talking about? Galahads on the engines. That bonus from having the additional crew on the engines. Really does good stuff. Ship explodes, leaving behind a fuel drone part and 17 scrap. Lovely. We have a distress beacon over here. Gotta go to the distress beacon. Free money is better than no money. Ah, uh, it's a pirate. Ha ha! I knew someone would fall into our dashably trap, they say. It appears this distress beacon was nothing but a decoy for a pirate ambush. Well, you fiends, you've only got a, a heavy laser mark one and some kind of bomb. If we're lucky, we'll be able to knock out your weapons before you ever get to fire that bomb. And I don't really care about that laser can't hurt us anyway. The bomb is the problem, and down it goes, so it's not a problem anymore. Knock out their oxygen with our crystal burst. The crystals, I think it's really weird that the crystals have a different, uh, <laughs> they actually look like crystals. Well, not weird, but cool. I think it's a very interesting choice. Alright, they offer us five missiles, a drone part, and eleven scrap in exchange for their lives, but we will not accept surrender. Lancelot is going in for the kill. Yes. Ha ha ha. Normally that's a pretty decent offer, except we don't need missiles, none of our weapons use them. So for the time being, we might as well just get what we get randomly. Ship explodes, giving us two fuel, two missiles, and 16 scrap. Same with drone parts, we don't need any at the moment, so why waste time trying to get them? We are going to use that money now to upgrade our doors, though, in case we come across anyone who wants to board us. That'll slow them down a little bit. We've got a store over there, which would have been great before I just sold all my stuff. <laughs> um, let's jump here, I think. Maybe we can head back there before we leave, if we need anything. A curious sight greets us at this beacon. A disabled rock freighter drifts in space while two mantis craft battle it out, presumably over who deserves the spoils. Let's wait and then attack the surviving mantis. The mantis craft may have their differences, but when it comes to us, they're of one mind. The smaller ship suffers a power failure as it moves to engage, but the larger one lets off a volume of fire and moves in. So there's one disabled ship that just turned around and tried to fight us. They're going to be boarding us, so I guess it's a good thing I bought that, uh, that upgrade. You're going to get in there. When you get close, I'm actually going to send the crystal guy in to help. Because that would be helpful. And down go the doors. That could be bad. Get in there, guys. Get, get, get. And you're going to get in and help. We don't want them to completely destroy our doors. They're not going to be able to fight them, honestly. But that should be okay. We're going to knock out their weapons. Because they do have the potential of hurting us. We're going to knock out their oxygen. We want to give them something to think about. And they should leave their leave our ship alone. But possibly not before I get quite badly beat up. 
We may have to hide in our weapons room and use the lockdown power to protect ourselves. This is Lancelot over here, yeah. I'm not sure if I can actually get out of the room in time, though, now that they've broken the level 2 doors. But, we may have to rely on that. Let's try and hit them in the helm. Can I run fast enough if I need to get away? We've got 36 health, you've got 41 health. I'll leave it for a second longer, see if we can't damage them and make them run. They're not running. Alright guys, get out of here. Get, 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 get to the med bay. That was close there, Jack. Too close for my comfort. Hit them in the weapons. And they did decide... Ah, good, we teleported them out just in time. They did make it. Power to the engines to heal up the med bay. They did make it into our weapons room, but not long enough to actually attack the thing. And down they go. Stinkers. Alright, in the time it took us to eliminate the Ant Mantis ship, the rock must have repaired their FTL and jumped away. We picked two fuel and thrown part and 23 scrap from the bones of both Mantis vessels. Not bad. Alright, Lancelot, get up there and fix that thing. Jack's healing up pretty quick too, and he'll be able to come help. There we go. That's the door combinations here are kind of interesting. There's a lot of, a lot of options for getting around. Like you can come around this way, or you can go around this way, depending on which side of the room you're on at the given time. This one has that same kind of deal. If you're on the left side, you can run this side. If you're on the right side, you can run on that side. Kind of cool. Kind of redundant, but kind of cool. Definitely nothing else that does it quite like that. Now let's also buy our sensors, and you know what? Let's just... No, I can't buy it. I can't buy that. I don't have any more money. That should be nice, though. I like being able to see into the enemy ship. I think it makes combat a lot more interesting when you can see what they're doing. Now, they've got how many? Let's see, they've got one, two, three, four ish jumps until they overrun us. So if I go. Oh, one, two, three, four, hang on. One jump, two jump, three jump. Yeah, I have to be I have to be here on the fourth jump. So I've got enough jumps to go at least here. We can decide which direction we're gonna go based on how much money we have and what we find. So, minute fissures in the shield spark and crackle as the ship jumps into the wake of a huge asteroid. More asteroids follow, as does a lost and aggressive rock pirate ship. Alright, rocks. It's a rock pirate ship full of rocks. That's fairly unusual. Normally, uh, pirate ships aren't crewed by their respective race. Actually, why am I attacking that? We want to knock out their shields and their weapons, pronto. Let me actually do the other way around. Use the hotkeys, if I remember. Makes things a lot faster. Oh, they got the bomb off, but it did miss, so that's okay. And down go the shields. So now the asteroids should do most of the work for us. These unfortunate little rock guys aren't going to have anything to defend themselves with. Yes, indeed. Here they come. More fires. I wonder if I can just wait and watch them die. <laughs> ah, there we go. We have level 2 in both of our... Oh, hang on. You're not in the weapon system. Get back in there, Lancelot. Level 1 in weapons, level 2 in both of our evasion skills, which is fantastic. You know what? Let's, let's not make it too easy for them. Let's just kill them. There we go. Down they go. And the ship explodes, even behind two fuel, a missile, and 23 scrap. Hard to complain about that. Yes, it is. Distress beacon there. Ooh, that makes it a lot more nice to go to. But it does mean we miss out on another jump. Ah, well, let's go and see what they've got. It's hard to say no to a distress beacon. What's here? We arrive at the location of the distress call, and a civilian ship hails us, thanking us for responding and asking us to lead them to the nearest depot. Let's lead them to their destination. They give us 14 scrap and a quest marker. That's not the best, honestly, but I guess it's better than nothing. <laughs> I guess. <sighs> we have nothing to sell, so going to the store isn't entirely useful. I wish I could sell Jack. <laughs> Alright, well, let's just go, I guess. Let's jump to the exit. I don't think I have enough time to jump somewhere else and jump back. At the long-range beacon, we find... Uh, someone offering to give us three drone parts in exchange for two fuel, but that doesn't help us, so we reject that offer. And no, they're going to catch us before we go anywhere else anyway if we try and go there and back. So, I guess we missed out by one area. Let's jump to the Zoltan homeworlds and see if they're better off for us. Because we're not going into the Uncharted Nebula. I don't like no nebulas. No, I don't. They are good for letting you jump to more places, which gives you more money if you find things, but I find there's a lot of nothing in them, and ion storms suck. So, we're far from Federation home space here in Zoltan territory, and it's not clear whether the authorities will have any goodwill remaining. We choose to push forwards. Alright. What do we have? What do we have? What do we have? Okay. Everyone's doing okay. Things are in the right place. We're good to go. However, before we jump any further, we're going to have to end this episode here for now. Thanks for watching, everyone. This has been Vanguard of Valor on board the Crystal Cruiser Type A at long last. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to like the episode. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.